As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. You only live today once. Why do it alone? Branch together. Hi everyone, welcome to Branch Together. My name is Jared. Today we'll be reading from Luke chapter three. Before we dive in, we're gonna take a moment and pray together. (sighs) Father, I pray that you would still our hearts today in this moment, in this hour, in this time. I pray that as we hear your scriptures read, that you would speak to us, that we would find a way to listen, that you would reveal yourself to us and that it would stick with us today in some way. I pray for those who feel like they're far away and lost right now, that your word would go forth today and touch them right where they are. I pray for those who are struggling, who are wrestling with darkness, who are wrestling with things that are difficult for them or seem impossible. I pray today that they would hear a bit more about the story of your son, the God who came to be with us, the God who delivers us, the God who saves us, the God who comes to set captives free. Lord, wherever wherever each one of us is today hearing this, today or whenever we end up seeing this video, I just pray that you would reach them, that you would connect to them, that you would show yourself to them. Lord, show yourself to us and set us free. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Luke chapter 3. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip was tetrarch of the region of Ituria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias was tetrarch of Abilene. During the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into all the region around the Jordan River, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet, the voice of one shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Every valley will be filled and every mountain and hill will be brought low. And the crooked will be made straight and the rough ways will be made smooth. And all humanity will see the salvation of God. So John said to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore produce fruit that proves your repentance. And don't begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you that God can raise up children for Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe is laid at the root of the trees, and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So the crowds were asking him, what then should we do? John answered them, the person who has two tunics must share with the person who has none, and the person who has food must do likewise. Tax collectors also came to be baptized, and they said to him, teacher, what should we do? He told them, collect no more than you are required to. Then some soldiers also asked him, and as for us, what should we do? He told them, take money from no one by violence or by false accusation and be content with your pay. While the people were filled with anticipation and they all wondered whether perhaps John could be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I am is coming. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clean out his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into the storehouse. But the chaff he will burn up with inextinguishable fire. And in this way, with many other exhortations, John proclaimed good news to the people. But when John rebuked Herod the Tetrarch because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil deeds that he had done, Herod added this to them all. He locked up John in prison. Now, when all the people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. And while he was praying, the heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from the heaven. You are my one dear son, in you I take great delight. So Jesus, when he began his ministry, was about 30 years old. He was the son, as was supposed, of Joseph, 
the son of Heli, the son of Math- Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Melchi, the son of Jani, the son of Joseph, the son of Matthias, the th- son of Amos, the son of Nahum, the son of Elsi, the son of Nagai, the son of Maat, the son of Matthias, the son of Samin, the son of Joash, the son of Joda, the son of Joannan, the son of Risa, the son of Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, the son of Neri, the son of Melchi, the son of Adi, the son of Kasim, the son of Elmadam, the son of Ur, the son of Joshua, the son of Eliezer, the son of Joram, the son of Mathat, the son of Levi, the son of Simeon, the son of Judah, the son of Joseph, the son of Jonam, the son of Eliakim, the son of Melia, the son of Mena, the son of Mathatha, uh, the son of Nathan, the son of David, the son of Jesse, the son of Obed, the son of Boaz, the son of Salah, the son of Nashon, the son of Maninadab, the son of Admin, the son of Arni, the son of Hezron, the son of Perez, the son of Judah, the son of Jacob, the son of Isaac, the son of Abraham, the son of Terah, the son of Nahor, the son of Sarug, the son of Reu, the son of Peleg, the son of Eber, the son of Shelah, the son of Canaan, the son of Arphaxad, the son of Shem, the son of Noah, the son of Lamech, the th- son of Methuselah, the son of Enoch, the son of Jared, the son of Mahalalel, the son of Canaan, the son of Enosh, the son of Seth, the son of Adam, the son of God. One important thing to notice now and through the book is that Luke is always grounding the life of Jesus in real time, real space, and real events. Luke sat about set about to write an orderly account with eyewitnesses. This is not something that he made up or weaved as a fairy tale. He is claiming that this is happening during the reign of Tiberius, when Pilate was governor and when Ananiah and Caiaphas were the priests in charge. He is saying, look, this happened. You can go talk to these people. Luke is writing history. This is really important because this is a sacred text claiming to be legitimate history. Now, about chapter 3, verse 18 is one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible. Uh, They're describing what's going on with John the Baptist. We're hearing things like the axe is ready to hit the root of the tree. All the bad trees will be cut down and thrown into the fire. You brood of vipers. One is coming after me with a winnowing fork in his hand and he will burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then it says this. So with many other exhortations, he preached the good news to the people of God. How is this good news? This sounds really scary, really terrifying stuff. But sometimes hard news is the best news and the good news. If you are doing evil, the call to stop doing evil and turn to do good is the good news for you and for everyone else. If you continue in evil, there's an ultimate judge with the power to stop you. When we continue in evil, like these tax collectors, like these soldiers, like these religious leaders, when we do that, we are rejecting what we're created for, which is to love God and to love others. When we extort, when we hurt, when we wound others, when we do evil, we reject what it means to be human made in God's image. And the best news we could hear is a harsh word to call us forcefully to stop what we're doing and to turn away from that evil. And that's what John's doing in this book. And that's what John's doing in Luke 3. He's coming out and saying, this is evil. Walk away from that. Repent, be baptized, and come and find new life. Come and be restored. Come and find your true self again. When I do evil, I need the good news of God calling it evil and calling me to stop. There's a lot more we could talk about today. This is a great chapter, and we'd love to hear your thoughts. So please take some time today. Share with us perhaps a favorite verse, a favorite scene, something that God's saying to you as you read today. What are you hearing? What's kind of bubbling up and sticking with you? That's all for today. Uh, Join us tomorrow as we do Luke chapter 4. Darren will be leading, and we are three episodes away from episode 100. 
So stick with us. Take care, guys.